Hey guys, welcome. I want to talk about another penny stock in this video. It's a company called Fluent, F-L-N-T. This one popped up on my penny stock screener just this week and I've actually dug into it. I've gotten the story together here. I really like it. I think it could be interesting and I'd like to tell you guys about it. Now, if you want to hear more about how I find these penny stocks and how my screener works and all that, I'll link this video up here. It goes into some detail on how I find these companies, how I uh, cut out what I think are the garbage companies and how I sort them to find the very, very best ones ones. Uh, and, and this one in particular, Fluent, is absolutely one of the ones that has risen to the top. Uh, so let me tell you the story. Okay, so basically Fluent is an advertising company, but they have a really interesting business model, right? So they're not uh, display-based, they're performance-based. And so basically their mission here, you can see, is to connect consumers with advertisers on media properties that are owned and operated by this company or by partners, right? And so, you know, it's not, a, like I say, it's not a traditional display-based model where they're simply popping up banner ads and, and click-through ads and all that kind of thing, but they're performance-based on an opt-in model. So what they're trying to do here is they're trying to get consumers to opt into specific offers to uh, give their personal information and then in response they're rewarded with uh, different promos and, and all this kind of thing. Um, here's a, a snapshot of a typical consumer experience right, where they would uh, register and uh, provide their personal information. They would take some kind of action uh, maybe based on a survey or provide some additional information or participate in some way uh, and then they would qualify for these offers and you know the key thing with these offers are of course if that they're typically free trials or they're loss leaders to get somebody in and, and spend additional dollars in particular business right so uh, this model is interesting because it's not just this um, uh, faceless uh, display based advertising it's actually getting to know these folks tailoring the experience and because the data is owned over time they have further opportunities then to tailor uh, uh, additional offers into that consumer base and and continue to grow that performance-based advertising across a lot of additional properties. And it, it seems to be working for them. You know, that opt-in database is growing. There's 150 million users that have opted into this thing in the US, and they're claiming 25 million interactions uh, per month out of that user base as people respond to these offers and, and go to additional media properties and that kind of thing. So it seems very active, and it seems to be growing. Okay, so let's take a look at the fundamentals of the company. This is the uh, analysis tool that I use here, Portfolio123. I'll put a link to this down in the description if you're interested for a trial. Uh, a large part of the site is free as well. Now, you know, this one has had uh, a little bit of a recent price run up here since back in November. Uh, it's still under five bucks, which I like. That's one of my screener criteria for my penny stocks. It's a small cap stock. It's only $347 million in terms of market cap. So it's small enough that the big money is not able to play in here just yet, uh, which presents an opportunity for smaller investors like you and me. Now, they've had some nice growth numbers over the next last little while. You know, uh, we're seeing nice consistent annual sales increases, same on the quarterly basis. And uh, the EPS and sales growth, uh, so the EPS in particular this year has been really, really impressive and, and nice, solid, strong sales numbers over the past few years. Sentiment is good in this one. You know, we're seeing analyst targets uh, that are well in excess of the current price. Uh, so sentiment wise, this one still has some room to grow. I would classify this as a value stock, um, you know, largely because we're seeing some pretty attractive valuation numbers. Price to sales down at 1.17, um, which is good even for this particular media space. Uh, price to book is similarly low, down at 1.67. So, you know, these value plays in the small cap space offer a little margin of safety here, I think, uh, in terms of having a bit of a floor underneath the price, which is attractive uh, in this particular industry. I like the institutional ownership here. It's not too crazy. It's at 33%, and these would be small private investors uh, that are probably hanging on to the shares. I think as this thing grows and gets above that $5 number, that's when it might become eligible for some of these larger uh, hedge funds to invest in, and that's always a nice catalyst for these uh, little penny stocks as they get up over that $5 number. And, you know, again, I think sentiment is behind these guys, right? You look at these upside surprises, uh, going back over the last four quarters, they've consistently topped estimates, uh, which is a really, really good story. And I think it's going to continue to get that kind of attention go forward. People are going to like that story and they're going to anticipate more of it going into the next few quarters. Okay, so what can we look forward to for this company? So I think that the catalysts are basically three primary things. I think number one, as the economy recovers into 2021, I think that ad spend is going to recover. 
cover. Uh, these guys live and die by the amount that advertisers are willing to spend. And of course, the amount advertisers are willing to spend is uh, directly linked to their own prospects for future growth, right? So if the companies that are looking to buy uh, advertising and eyeballs on, on some of these uh, digital properties are actually doing well, if their business starts to grow, then they're going to increase the amount they're spending. Uh, and I think these guys are well positioned as the economy improves in 2021. Second thing is that there's a, a pretty good news story here on a replatforming that these guys did. Uh, they moved entirely into the AWS cloud and they moved all their infrastructure in there. And I think now they're well positioned for scalability, right? They're anticipating growth and they made that investment in a, a complete move to the cloud. Um, so two things. One is that's a, a pretty big vote of confidence in their own um, ability to scale. They, they think that growth is coming. They want to get onto AWS where they're going to remove those scalability constraints on their existing platform. The third thing I think is that uh, uh, low valuation, really. I, I don't think these guys deserve a valuation that low. So I think that's a really great story. And as the price uh, moves over that $5 threshold, the combination of low valuation uh, and a really good story in terms of potential growth is going to attract big money. And I think we're potentially going to see a nice run up in price on this guy. Okay, there is some downside risk though. You know, I think anybody that plays in this space of, of collecting personal information is at risk due to all the noise and politics around data privacy. I think that uh, these guys are already seeing some of that. There was a lawsuit filed by the government back in 2018 uh, alleging some misuse of collected data. They still haven't settled that. It's still being worked out. You know, so they're, I think they're going to be vulnerable to more of that as uh, everybody figures out data privacy in the advertising space into the future. They're absolutely going to have to be careful with this. I think it's mitigated to a degree based on their opt-in model. You know, I think they're a little bit insulated from some of that, but as that 2018 lawsuit proves, they're not immune to it. Second risk here is the really, really big players in the advertising space, right? So these guys are a niche player. They're down here in this opt-in model on smaller digital properties. Um, so their growth is capped on the upside by the big, big players, right? So the Googles and the Facebooks out there uh, that are coming at the top down. They're they're not obviously playing into this space that Fluent is, and and so you know I think they're they're okay down where they are, but it sort of limits top side growth potentially. And so it'll be interesting to see where this sort of opt in advertising model plays out in the future? Is there enough growth that will still continue to happen beneath the notice of these larger advertiser players? That's a risk. The third risk I see here is that, you know, I'm assuming that the uh, ad spend recovery is going to happen in 2021. There's a risk that it doesn't. You know, a lot of economists are worried about the potential um, ongoing unemployment in North America as we uh, come into the recovery in 2021. Are we going to see a lagging uh, recovery in terms terms of the employment picture. If that happens, it could crimp ad spending and we might not see the growth that we're looking for in 2021. It might get pushed out a little bit further uh, into 2022 or worst case, it might not happen at all to the degree that we wanted to. And these small business closures and all that kind of thing could ripple into the broader economy. Obviously, these guys would suffer as a result. So that's the story on this one, guys. I think on balance, it's a good one. I like this company. I like the story. I think it's a really, really interesting pick. Um, if you want more picks like this, um, check out my penny stock screener on Patreon. Uh, every week I post the top 20 results from that screener and there's a lot of really, really great companies in there just like this one with some really interesting stories uh, that you can dig into and that I will continue to dig into as well and do future videos on. So please check that out on Patreon. And uh, if you like this video, please throw it a like, thumbs up, uh, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.